Hi everyone, my name is Catherine and I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Today I'm going to show you how I hacked a normal shorts pattern into a maternity shorts pattern. I'm using this pattern, but you can use any pattern. First, let's go over the supplies. As always, they're listed in the description below. So you'll need a shorts pattern, one to two yards of fabric, depending on your size and pattern, a clear ruler, elastic thread, pins, ironing board and iron, a sewing machine, a serger, which is optional, fabric, scissors, and thread. So first, let's take a look at the pattern. As you can see, it's a vintage pattern, which I think is so cute and charming. I've actually made shorts A before, but today I want to make shorts B. I've had this pattern for a really long time, and if you're looking for it, you can probably find it online at a vintage pattern store or on Etsy or something. So I want to just make sure I have the right amount of yardage, and the reason I want to use pattern B is because it has a yoke. So you can see here uh, there's two pieces for shorts and then two pieces for yoke, and then you cut two of each. The fact that this has a yoke is going to make it a lot easier to hack for maternity pants. You can see that the pattern is so well loved that I have to store it in a manila envelope. So I'm just going to cut out all of the pieces for this particular pattern. And I just want to say that if you're looking for more maternity sewing videos, I have multiple on my channel and I will list them down in the description below and at the end of this video. I decided to make a lot of my maternity clothes and document it for you guys. So be sure to check it out if you're looking for that kind of inspiration. Okay, so here are some maternity shorts that I bought. And I'm gonna show you kind of how they are cut. You can see that the front is curved up and out. So this is the center back seam here. I'm using this lightweight printed denim from my fabric stash. And if you saw my confessions of a fabric quarter video, I pledged to use up my stash this year. If you wanna watch that video, I'll link it down in the description and at the end of this video. So first I'm going to slash and spread the shorts pattern along the line in the middle. And I'm gonna add about an inch and a half just to give them a little extra bagginess. So I'm starting with the front and I'm going to add some inches onto the top of the shorts. So first at the center front, I'm adding about three inches and then at the side seam one inch to mimic those shorts that I showed you before. That is gonna give me some room for my bump. Then I'm gonna add one inch to the hemline because these are super duper short and I don't want them to be so short. Now I'm gonna slash and spread the back as well. For the back, I'm going to add one inch to the center back and one inch at the side seam so that the side seams match up. And of course, I'm gonna add another inch to the hemline on the back piece. After I get everything marked, I'm gonna cut them out with my fabric scissors and make sure to mark all my notches. Here's a close up of the pieces and you can see I've added at the top and the bottom for both and then for the front one, at the center front by the rise, it has an extra three inches. That will cover your bump. So now I'm going to pin the inseams and sew them together. That's the first step when it comes to sewing. And then I'm going to press it flat. And I'm going to use my serger to finish all the edges for this one. If you don't have a serger, that's fine. You can just zigzag. And if you're looking to buy a serger, I really like this one. It's the brother, it's pretty affordable, and I'll link it down in the description. So now I'm going to match up my rise the front and the back, you can see the front rise is a lot higher than the back, and I'm gonna pin it together. Here it is close up, and I'm going to sew it with about a half an inch of seam allowance. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. It is free and easy for you to do, and it makes a big difference for me. 
So I'm going to measure my waist on both the front and the back now, and that's gonna be for my um, panel. Next, I really carefully gathered it because I did not do a double stitch because <laughs> I was lazy. All right, so I've gathered the waist line here on the top and the on the front and the back. And they look really big, so I'm not sure if I'll take them in at all at the side, but I'm gonna try them on. I'm gonna start shoring the waistband. So here's an example of shoring. It's done with elastic thread. So I'm gonna cut a piece for the waistband and then I'm going to shore it on my machine. I'm gonna use those measurements that I took before and make them the same. And I am using a really lightweight fabric for this part because I don't want it to be too bulky when it gets shirred. So first I'm going to hem the top of the waistband and then I'm gonna give it a really good press. Before you shirr anything, you always have to hem it. And now I'm going to install my bobbin with the elastic thread. This bobbin was actually hand wound very slowly and I was making sure not to pull on the elastic. So once I get it in the bobbin case, I'm going to start shirring. And you can see that the machine will start to just gather it from the tension. I made the lines about a quarter of an inch apart. All right, so this is my waistband now. It's been really shirred down. You can see it looks very small. Um, I'm gonna now attach it to the front and the back of my shorts. So whenever I pin anything on to something like a waistband and the bottom, I like to start by pinning the sides and then pinning the middle and then pinning in between those anchor pins and that will make sure that it's evenly distributed. So here it is, it's ready to sew. I'm going to attach it with a straight stitch first just to make sure that it looks good so I can try them on and then I'll come back and clean up the seams inside. And once I get the waistband sewn on, I'm going to pin up the side seams and then sew them up so that I can try them on for real. Here you can see both sides are pinned and I cannot stress how important it is to just try things on as you go when you're sewing things for yourself because you can always adjust the fit. Speaking of which, I tried these on and the rise was too short for me. So I'm going to cut out a little bit more of the rise and that's just my personal fit preference. All right, so I re-sewed the rise seam and I'm gonna marrow it now to be basically like this, but down. And after that, I'm going to clean up my waistband and side seams with the marrow machine because I think it's looking good. And of course, I also did a baby hem on the openings of the legs. So here are the shorts. They're done and they're super duper cute. Here is a little video of the finished product and I got a lot of use out of these during my pregnancy. They're just really comfortable and easy to wear. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials about sewing, dyeing, and upcycling. All right, see you guys later. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to go and follow me at my social medias at Onyx Art Studios and tag me if you make anything from my channel. I also have online dyeing workshops on my website, onyxartstudio.com. If you like this video, check out these other videos. Like I said, I have a whole maternity sewing playlist and I will put that down in the description below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. See you guys next time. Bye.